everyone, Mr. Love here, coming to you from outside the diesel shop. Today we're just going to be doing a little inspection on this truck right here to get you ready for your Class A CDL or Class B CDL. So we're using just our dump truck and trailer today. If you are going to get your Class A CDL, I do suggest doing it with a regular tractor trailer truck with a fifth wheel. That way you won't have any restrictions on your license. If you use this dump truck and trailer, you'll have a restriction on your license for a fifth wheel. Okay, so always refer to the actual um, CDL book. This is a New York State one. This one's updated for this year. This is a 2022-2023 one. It's been the same since 2020. Um, so always refer to this before you actually go and do your test. Check it out online. That way if there's any updated stuff, it'll be more you know, updated on there a lot faster. So I'm going to put this down, then we'll start going through the stuff as you would on your inspection for your road test. Okay, so it gets a little confusing when you go and take your actual road test. The road test is going to be three parts. The first part is going to be a pre-trip inspection where you check out the entire vehicle. Second part will be the obstacle course on the closed course with the cones and stuff. Third part will be out on the road. To um, pass the test, first you got to do your pre-trip inspection. You go through all the pre-trip inspection. If you pass that part, then you move on to the um, obstacle course part. You pass that part, you move on to the road test part. So today we're going to be doing the pre-trip inspection here. So we're going to go around the whole vehicle. When they do the test for you, they're going to just pick a couple spots. Usually what they do is usually either under the hood, the left side of the vehicle. Um, there'll definitely be an in cab. Then you'll check the lights and stuff with them. So, But we're just going to do the whole vehicle because sometimes they mix it up and do the back of the vehicle or the right side under the hood. They might have you do multiple ones. It's whatever their computer tells them for you to do that day. So we'll get right started with the front of the vehicle. Sometimes that's on there. So when we first do the front of the vehicle, we kind of just stand back a little bit and we look underneath and we're just looking for puddles or anything hanging like that. So as you're doing your um, inspection, call out everything that you're checking and what you're checking on it. So right now I'm checking underneath the vehicle. There's no signs of any leaks, nothing hanging. I'm checking my license plate that's secured on there, checking my inspection sticker. Um, in New York State, we have to have inspections each year. Um, this one here, it's good to December, so I'm still good here. And I'm kind of just giving an overall look of my light condition, windshield condition, stuff like that. Um, I'm, making, I'm not having my lights on at this point or anything, but I'm just checking the lenses, make sure they're cleaned off, make sure there's no cracks or anything like that. Okay, we'll move around to underneath the hood here. Kind of like to start at the top, middle, and work my way down. So a lot of the stuff they don't have you check, but it's all stuff you should be checking. So it's good to call out extra stuff than not enough stuff. So I like to check my intake hoses. So this is right off my turbo here after it comes through the charge air cooler. Um, just checking them, make sure the clamps and stuff are on there. Everything's intact. Check my wire and harness, make sure it's not frayed or rubbing any place. It's in good condition. I'm looking for overall leaks and stuff on all my components. Check my power steering fluid, pull out the dipstick, make sure it's above the add mark and below the full mark. Checking the condition of my power steering hoses, make sure there's no frays, make sure there's no leaks, make sure all the clamps are on there. Follow it down to my power steering gearbox here. So again, my power steering gearbox, hoses are intact, no leaks, secured to the frame. My steering shaft, grab right a hold of my steering shaft and give it a good shake. Don't be afraid to grab a hold of all the components and shake them around a little bit. That shows that you're actually checking them. So we have our little U-joint here and our shaft. Make sure there's no play in that. Make sure the bolt and everything's secured on there and kind of just keep following our way down here. So we come down to our pitman arm right here. So our pitman arm is attached to the gearbox. This is actually a bolt right here that holds that on even though it doesn't look like a bolt. So make sure that's in there, it's intact. Make sure our pitman arm, there's no cracks, no bends in it. We get down to the bottom of our pitman arm. That's where our drag link attaches. So our drag link is the other component through there. So our drag link right here. So we got our pitman arm, goes up and down, changes the rotation of the steering wheel into linear motion. We got our drag link here that attaches our pitman arm over to our actual axle hub right here where we can do our steering and stuff at. What I want to check on my drag link in the bottom of my pivot arm is make sure 
that our castle nut is on here with a pin through there. Same with the other end of it, castle nut with a pin on there. We look down a little bit further, we have our tie rod down there that connects this side to the other side. Again, looking at the castle nut on there, make sure the castle nut's there with the pin through it. Make sure there's no bends, cracks, anything like that on that component. Okay, so that's our steering. I'll move back up to our engine compartment here a little bit, and then we'll work our way down again. So, what we have to do for this part is tell everything that our belt actually runs. So, on here we have a serpentine belt. So, our serpentine belt on here runs our air compressor. Our air compressor is not leaking. It's securely mounted. We can grab right a hold of it and shake it a little bit. Just be careful if you've been out driving for quite a while. It does get pretty hot, especially up on the head there. But, you know, just grab it, shake it a little bit. We'll check our serpentine belt. We're looking for cracks, abrasion, wire, stuff like that on there. And we're making sure that it doesn't have more than three quarters of an inch of play in our belt. So we're going to move our belt up and down. We're going to rotate it a little bit and just look for cracks, frays, stuff like that. We'll check our pulleys and stuff on there, make sure that they're all secured. So like I said, we have to list off everything that the serpentine belt runs on this. On this one, it runs the air compressor, runs the fan, the water pump, the air conditioning compressor, a couple different idler pulleys there, um, power steering pump, water pump, all that on this one here. Okay, we're also checking kind of our exhaust at this point right here. You can see our exhaust manifold on here. Make sure there's no soot or anything, no leaks like that. Continue our way down a little bit. We'll go down to our suspension down here. So the first thing we can see right here is our shock absorber. So our shock absorber is in good shape. There's no leaks or anything like that. Most of these are filled with um, oil inside there. So if there's a start to go bad, they start to seep the oil out of there through the passive seals or the outside cover of it could just rot away. So check for that. Okay, we look at our um, leaf spring down there. So our leaf spring, we wanna check both ends of our leaf spring to make sure that's securely mounted. So we got shackles on each end of it here. So we got our front mount right here, and then we have our back mount back there. We wanna make sure the pins are in there, make sure that the mount's securely mounted to the frame, no signs of looseness, no signs of wear, no signs of cracks. Checking out our leaf spring itself, we're checking all the leaves on there, Make sure there's no cracks or anything on the leaves themselves. Make sure everything's secure. We're going to check the U-bolts down there on the leaf spring. Make sure they're securely mounted with no signs of looseness or wear. A lot of times when they're loose, we could actually see our spring shifting around and stuff like that. We check our leaf spring. We check our U-bolts. No signs of looseness. No signs of shifting or anything around. We check our back shackles and stuff there. They're secure. Pins are in there. No signs of the leaf spring shifting around. Okay. Now we'll move down to our brake components here. So our brake components are a little hard to see on here, but definitely call the stuff out. So first we'll check our brake hose here. Our brake hose is in good condition. There's no signs of fray. It's not rubbing on anything. There's no shiny spots where it rubs when we turn or anything like that. We go down to our brake chamber down here. We go down to our brake chamber down here. Our brake chamber is in good shape. It's securely mounted. No signs of leaks or anything like that. Um, we really wouldn't be able to hear a leak or anything unless we were stepping down on the brake pedal, but they like you to you know, say that stuff. We go over to our slack adjuster over here. We make sure both pins are in there with cotter pins. If we pull out on our slack adjuster here, we don't have more of an inch of free play there. So everything looks good and everything's securely mounted. We go down to our actual brakes down here. It's kind of hard to see. So there's a little inspection hole here. You kind of just pretend to look in that inspection hole or do the best you can to look in there. And we're checking the thickness of our brake shoes. We're making sure they're above a quarter inch of thickness left on there. We're making sure there's no signs of oil or grease or anything like that on the shoes or drum. We're inspecting our brake drum the best we can. It's kind of hard to see. We can look through our wheel out here and see a couple spots on there. But basically, we're checking our brake drum to make sure there's no signs of cracks, um, looseness, anything like that on our brake drum. Mostly cracks and um, irregular wear and stuff we're looking for, the best we can on there. Next we'll go into our tires. So our tires, remember ABCs when we talk about tires, abrasion, bulges, cuts. There's a little stone in here, I'll pop that out. I'm standing right here. Okay, so we're checking the tread of the tire, we're checking the sidewall of the tire, both inside and outside. We're looking for cuts, gouges, bulges, irregular wear, abrasions, stuff like that. 
We're checking our actual tread depth here on our steer axle. Should be above 430 seconds. You get a tire depth gauge at you know Walmart, Runnings, Tractor Supply, stuff like that. They're usually just a couple bucks. So every mechanic should have one of those. It measures in either millimeters or 30 seconds. You just push it down onto the tire tread, and there's little things here. You just line up with the edge of it there. Tells you the um, depth of it. So we just put it in the tread. We push it down. This one here is at 1230 seconds. So 1230 seconds is way above our 430 second minimum there. So we're good to go on there. So just be aware, you know, how to use that. Also, uh, we usually don't have to check it on our test unless they ask us to. But we're going to check our tire pressure or at least tell them that our tire pressure is above 100 pounds. Before you go out each day, check it with a tire gauge. Don't be kicking a tire or anything like that. Your foot's not that calibrated. But our tire gauges are fairly accurate for the most part. So we'll check our valve stem. We'll check, make sure the cap's on there. We'll check it with our tire pressure gauge on there. Make sure, you know, it's whatever it's supposed to be. This tire right here is 11R22.5. It's supposed to be 120 pounds for the steer axle. But we usually just say that it's 100 pounds on our road test there. Okay. So our tire, abrasion, ball just cuts inside, outside. Everything looks good on there. It's about 4.30 second tire wear on there. We go down to our rim right here. We're checking our rim for a few things. The um, biggest thing is we're looking for looseness or anything like that. So we're checking our lug nuts, making sure nothing's, you know, no signs of rust streaks or shininess or anything where it looks like our wheel's been loose, you know, going back and forth a little bit. So we're looking for cracks and stuff on our wheel rim right here. Um, one thing that they want you to call out all the time is no illegal welds. I've been working on trucks for many years and I've only seen a couple welded rims. Usually if the rim cracks, you get rid of it. So, um, so illegal welds on there. We're looking for looseness, cracks, stuff like that. Make sure everything's in good condition for our wheels. Okay, so that's about it for this side of it here. We'll go over to the other side and just check out a few different things over on the other side of the truck. Okay, one thing we didn't call out on the other side of the truck was our actual hubcap right here. We want to check our hubcap, make sure there's no signs of leaks or um, looseness, no missing bolts or anything out of there. We definitely don't want oil running down our wheel. DOT doesn't like to see that kind of stuff. Okay, moving on to this side of the engine here. So remember, usually on this side, you just got to call out whatever's different on this side. Um, but sometimes you do have to do this side of the vehicle. So on this side right here, we have our washer fluid. That's not part of it, but make sure that's full. Um, make sure you can see it in there. Air cleaner, make sure that's secured on there. Again, we're checking our wiring, our alternators on this side right here. So again, so if we're over here, tell them that the belts look good, not more than three quarters of an inch of play in there. You can see here that it runs the alternator, the AC compressor, water pump fan, air compressor, stuff like that. This down here is just the air dryer for the air conditioning here, so don't worry about that at all. Um, over here's our engine oil on this truck here on this side of the truck. So pull out the dipstick, have a rag, wipe it down. We want to make sure that it's above the add mark and below the full mark on there. Our coolant reservoir here, we can give it a little shake. You can't really see it too good on the um, film probably, but you can look in here. We have an add mark, we have a max mark. We just want to make sure that it's in there. If we can shake it a little bit and see the level on there. We don't want to pull the cap off unless we know it's nice and cool, been sitting overnight or something. But usually when we're out on our road test, you know, we drove there so it's nice and warm by then. So that's all that's different over on this side. So just be familiar with the truck before you go and do your actual inspection stuff. Okay, so now we'll continue around with our inspection. So we're going to check the left side of the vehicle right now. So a few things you want to check as you're walking around. Kind of check the condition of your lights. Again, we won't have the lights on at this point, but check our lenses, stuff like that. We'll just give a quick glance at our windows and stuff like that. We'll check them better once we're inside, but we want to, you know, look for any cracks or um, debris or anything like that. Our mirrors, again, we'll check the adjustment and stuff when we're inside the cab, but, you know, give them a little shake and stuff, make sure everything's secured. We'll look down below here, we have our battery box. This one's built into the step. We want to make sure our steps are nice and secure, so give them a shake, give them a little step on. Our battery box there, usually they don't have you pull the cover off, but if you did pull the cover off of there, um, check the batteries. Um, you kind of look in the little access hole right there on it, and you're looking for you know corrosion, signs of the wires rubbing. We want to make sure our batteries are secure, make sure the hold downs and stuff are on there. 
Next, we have our air tank. We want to make sure that's securely mounted. No signs or leaks of anything like that. Next, we have our air dryer underneath there. Again, we're looking for leaks. Make sure it's securely mounted. Our back steps, we'll give them a little kick. Make sure they're good. Now that we're down a little further, we'll check the mirrors out again. Make sure everything's secured. We can check our door latches. Make sure they latch good. Okay, so we're continuing down the side of the body. There's not too much we got to pay attention to on the body itself. Just our reflectors. We have the amber ones in the front, the red one in the back there. As we're walking, we're kind of looking at the frame of the vehicle. We're looking underneath the vehicle the best we can. So if we're going down this side of the vehicle, what I'd call out is the frame. We can see the frame pretty good through there. Frame's in good shape. No signs of cracks or looseness or any of the stuff on there. We can see our drive shaft underneath there. They don't have you crawl underneath the vehicle, but definitely call out the components that you can see underneath there. So our drive shaft securely mounted, no signs of looseness, U -jo the U-joints and stuff look good in it. We'll go back to our rear suspension. Back here, we're basically saying everything that we talked about on the front suspension. You know, um, we have the leaf springs back here, we have the U-bolts, we have all that stuff there. We have the same brake chamber and stuff like that. We got our brake chamber, slack adjuster, no signs of leaks, no signs of looseness, pins are in there. We go through the same thing with our tires that we did on the front axle, the ABCs, abrasion, bulges, cuts. We're checking the tread depth back here also, but our tread depth on the back, we just needs to be above 230 seconds. So 430 seconds on the steer, 230 seconds on the back. So we'll check our tread depth. One thing we want to do on the back tires is we want to look down between our tires and make sure they're not touching any place. Make sure there's nothing stuck in there. So again, all the same stuff. We'll check that lug nuts. We'll check the axles. We'll check the tire pressure. All that stuff there. So same as the front axle. Check every component back here. Call them all out just like you did on the front. Okay, we'll go to the back of our vehicle here. So... It's different for the Class A and Class B. When we do the Class A, that's with the trailer here. So we'll get into the trailer stuff in a minute, but we'll finish up the truck stuff here first. So our truck, we're going to continue looking around here. Yep. So we're checking our light condition back here. Make sure everything's good. We're checking our, um, make sure everything's nice, secure, mounted back there. Again, we don't have our lights on at this point. We're just checking it all out. Checking our mud flaps, rear license plate stuff like that. We'll move around to the other side of the vehicle here. On the right side of the vehicle, again, we'll check the tires, all that stuff there. Tires, brakes, valve stem caps, hubs, mud flaps, all that stuff there. Continue walking down the side over here. Again, the drive shaft, the steps, fuel tank on this side, making sure the fuel tank's securely mounted. No signs of leaks on that. We're going to check our exhaust pipe under there. No signs of leaks on there. It's securely mounted. If we had leaks on our exhaust, we'd see soot and stuff like that. Again, we could check our doors on here. We could check our grab handles, stuff like that. Our fuel tank's part of the step here. Or our step's part of the fuel tank, I should say. So again, give that a little step. Make sure that's securely mounted. Give our mirror shake and stuff there. So pretty self-explanatory. Just call out everything that you're checking. Again, it's better to say more stuff than not enough stuff. Okay, we'll move inside the cab here, then we'll come back out and do the trailer for the Class A guys. Inside the truck here now, definitely a few things to check inside the truck. This is probably the part that gets most of the people. Everyone's going to do an in-cab inspection. There's quite a few tests that we have to do inside our cab for the brakes and stuff like that. So when I first get in, kind of just give everything a quick little overlook. We're checking our mirrors, we're checking the condition of our windshield, make sure there's no cracks or um, stuff on our windshield. We have to worry about our side windows, make sure our mirrors are in good shape. Okay, we'll start kind of just going across our dash right here, checking everything out. We could have it off on this point. Um, some of the examiners, they want you to fire it up as soon as you get in. Some of them don't, so it gets very confusing when you go and do your test. So couple things you definitely want to check inside the cab are safety devices. So we want to make sure we have fuses. So we have our fuses. We want to make sure we have our triangles. We have th at least three triangles. We have like six in this truck. But 
have at least three triangles, and our, we have our fully charged fire extinguisher. So, know where all those stuff is before you go and do your test. Oh, excuse me. We turn the key on. Okay, now that it's fired up, we make sure, we move the shifter around, make sure it's in neutral, and we slowly let off the clutch. Okay, so as we're doing this stuff here, we're checking all our gauges now. So we have our oil pressure gauge, we have our water coolant temperature gauge, we have our tachometer for our RPMs, we have our speedometer, which should be at zero because we're not moving at this point. We have our fuel gauge, we have our bolt um, amp gauge on here, we have our air tanks on here with two needles. Um, signifying the two different systems, the primary and the secondary. So make sure you call it that there's two needles and say that they're both, you know, what they're at. They're at 110 right now. We'll wait till it builds up to 120 before we shut it back off. So kind of just check all that stuff out there. You know, as you're telling about the gauges, say that the oil pressure gauge is good. It's above 20. Our water temperature is good. You know, it's slowly moving up. We show that we our engine spinning, so our tachometer is good. Our fuel gauge is good. Our um, voltage is in the green, so that's good. And our air system is up to 120 pounds now, both needles, so that's good. Okay, we'll continue it across. Our dash right here. Okay, so you just heard our air dryer purge off. So we're up to 120 pounds. So a few other things that we're going to check right now. We'll check our wipers, make sure they work. We'll make sure that the washers for the windshield wipers actually work too. So both of those work. We'll check our indicators on our dash. So our left turn indicator, our right turn indicator, our high beam indicator, all those are working on there. Okay, so all that stuff's good. Last thing we want to check on our little dash area right here is our defrost. We'll turn on our defroster, make sure that it's blowing air out good up on our dash up here. Okay, so everything's good there. So I'm going to shut my truck off now. Um, and do our brake check. Um, one thing before I do that, uh, steering wheel plays another thing. You could do that you know, at any point, but it's good to get the stuff off the bat before you do all your brake tests because the brake tests take a while and uh, you know you get a little flustered sometimes. So our steering, we'll just grab a hold of the steering wheel when it's running and we're just going to move it back and forth very slowly. We're going to kind of look out the window on the ground, kind of see our front wheel. We'll look, what we're looking for is just the amount of free play from our steering wheel before our tire starts to move out there on the ground. So we're just wiggling our steering wheel back and forth here, checking our tire out there, making sure everything is good on that. Okay, so that's good. We'll shut it off now. Okay, we shut our truck off, but we're gonna turn it to accessory here. Okay, so we got our truck shut off. Um, so this part here, for our class B purposes, we wouldn't have the trailer behind us. For our class A, we got the trailer behind us, so we're gonna um, do our brake test like we would for that. Okay, so okay, so what we would do for our brake test, so if this was just our class B, we would just have to worry about the truck parking brake. But since it's a class A for the trailer, we'll do the trailer brake also. So we push in our trailer brake, we release both our brakes and stuff there. And before we do our test, we want to make sure that we're above 100 PSI in our tanks right there. So we're still above 100 PSI. And what we're going to do now, we're going to hold our foot down on the brake pedal with both our brakes released. So our truck brakes released, our trailer brakes released. If this was our Class B CDL road test, we would just have to worry about the yellow knob, not the red one. Okay, so we'll, we got to do this test for a minute straight. So here we have our timer. If you don't have a you know a timer like this, just use your phone or something like that. So we have our timer set for one minute. We're going to start it, and while we're doing that, we're going to just hold steady pressure on our brake pedal. Okay, and what we're doing, we're listening for leaks right now. I actually have a little leak probably coming from the trailer glad hand back there you could see that our air gauge is dropping down slowly right here plus I could hear the leak so you definitely don't want that to happen during your road test so definitely check all this out before you go take your road test but you know call out that you're listening for leaks tell them that you don't hear any leaks 
Um, hopefully you won't have any at that point like we do right now. And we're checking our gauges. We're making sure it doesn't drop more than 3 PSI in the one minute here for just our truck. If we have a trailer hooked to us, make sure it doesn't drop more than 4 PSI in that one minute here. So we've already dropped over 10 PSI because of our leak we have right now coming out of our glad hand back there. But it still works for what we're doing for today. Okay, so we have just a few seconds left here. So a minute feels like a long time, especially when the examiner's watching you. Okay, so we're done with that. We can let our foot off the brake pedal now. Okay, so now we go right into our next brake test. So our next brake test now is going to be pumping down the brakes and checking to make sure that our emergency buzzer and alarm come on around 60 PSI. So we're going to slowly just pump them down. Okay, we're right at 60 PSI right there. You can see that our indicator light came on and we have the buzzer going off for low air pressure. Okay, so we're going to continue now. Now that we called those out, we're going to continue pumping down our brakes. Okay, so what just happened there is we were pumping down our brakes. We got down to about 30 PSI and our trailer parking brake and our trailer parking brake both popped out. I just pushed that back in to show you. So when it gets down low on pressure, it pops out right there. So our trailer one, this one's a little stronger, so that one popped out first. But when that one pops out, it pops them both out. So make sure that pops out now. And now we got to do our build up. So for our build up, we'll do another safe start. Foot down on the clutch. Start it up. Make sure we're in neutral. Slowly let off the clutch. Now we're going to be watching our air gauge here while we're letting the air build back up. We can give it a little RPMs here, so you can use the throttle here, get our RPMs up. You don't really want to go about 1,200 RPMs for this. You can just sit here and let it idle, but it'll take a while. But we can build up to, go up to like 1,200 RPMs with our engine, that way it'll build up a little bit faster. There's no point in going any faster than that. If we rev it up higher, all it's going to do is make more noise. It's not going to build up any faster. 1,200 RPMs is the fastest it's going to build up. Okay, so you heard our buzzer shut off there, but we're still waiting for our air to build all the way up. Okay. Okay, so just built up. What we're looking for is that nice clean purge we just heard there from the air dryer. So we just got up to 120 PSI. Our air governor told our air compressor to stop building air. And it told our air dryer to purge. So we're all good there. So now we could um, do our last of our little brake test here. Okay. So the three main parts that we have to do, obviously, are the air leak down, the um, build up time, the pop offs or our, um, PP valves there, or push pull valves. We also want to check our emergency brake um, activation of our truck and trailer to make sure that they actually hold. So our parking brake slash emergency brake, we want to make sure they hold for both of them. So first we'll check the trailer itself. So we'll just release the truck brakes. So we just release the truck brakes right there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put it down in low gear right here. And we're going to slowly just let out our clutch. We should hear our engine bog down just like that saying that our trailer brakes are holding for us, okay? Next, we'll actually check the little truck brakes here. So, for the truck brakes, we'll make sure they're applied, and we're gonna release our trailer brakes. So again, if you're just doing your Class B CDO, you know, you're just worrying about the yellow one, not the red one for the trailers, okay? So now our truck one's applied, and our trailer ones are released here. So again, I'm gonna slowly let out the clutch here. We should hear it bogged down. You know, our RPM should drop down a little bit. We should hear it back down. So that works right there also. Okay. So then our last um, brake test would be the rolling test. We're going to check to make sure our service brakes work. So what we would do for that, we would get up to five miles an hour, drive in forward. We would have, you know, both our brakes released, our parking brake and our, um, our parking brake for our truck and trailer, obviously, because we're moving. 
and we're going, and we're just going to step on our brake pedal here just to make sure we come to a you know, nice, straight, complete stop. So as you're doing that at five miles an hour, take your hands off the steering wheel and kind of just let it, you know, come to a nice little stop there. So that should be all for the in-cab inspection stuff. So before you get up into the cab, they'll probably run through all the lights and stuff with you, the examiner will. If you don't have an examiner doing it for you, you know, obviously you'd have to get out and check all the lights and stuff yourselves. But usually our examiner is going to do that for us. The examiner is going to stand out in front of our vehicle and they're going to tell us to run through our lights. So in this one here, this is our headlight switch here. Our high beams and stuff's over here on our turn signal. So what we would do if they were standing out in front of us, we would run through our left turn signal, our right turn signal, our marker lights, our headlights, our low beam, our high beam, and just make sure that they all work there. You want to run everything that the examiner is going to be looking at when they're standing there. Next, they'll go to the back of the truck, and you'll run through all the lights again. Left turn, right turn, four ways, um, brake lights, reverse lights, marker lights, tail lights. Run through all those on the back also. And then, after all that, then you will be good to go. I think we got everything in here. So, again, we'll check all our components in here. When we first get in, you know, our mirrors, our windshields. Um, one thing we didn't talk about yet is our seat belts. Pull out our seat belt, make sure there's no cuts or frays on our seat belt. Make sure that it latches good into the latch over there. Make sure our horn works. In here, we only have a city horn. There's no air horn in here. Um, and the other truck has an air horn, so if it has both horns, make sure you do both. If it just has the city horn, just do the city horn, obviously. For our Class 80 CDL, we also have to, you know, check all the trailer components and stuff, obviously. We would check that as we're out on the, you know, doing our walk-around inspection. Usually, if the trailer's hooked to the truck, you just continue around the whole truck and trailer. If you're at your road test part, they'll tell you what to check on the trailer, just like on the truck. One thing we'll definitely want to check is this area right here. So this is where we mount onto here. So this one here, this is an old little bumper banger here with a pinnel hook on there. So our trailer is hooked to the back here to the pinnel hook. Um, if we had this style hook up here, there's a few things that we have to check. So obviously we'll check our pinnel hook, make sure there's no cracks or looseness there. Make sure it bolts in there so it won't open up as we're going down the road or anything like that. Make sure everything's secured. Make sure our chains are on there. Make sure they're latched in good. Make sure our chains are crossed. We want to have our chains crossed there. That way if our trailer did come unhooked for some reason there, it would drop down onto those chains and those cross chains would cradle the tongue of our trailer so it wouldn't dig into the road. Plus it also helps you pull a little bit straighter too if it does come off. So make sure our chains are good. Make sure they're crossed. Make sure they're not all twisted up weirdly. We'll check our wire in here. Make sure that's not rubbing on anything. That's our trailer wire in there. Make sure that's secured in there. We'll check our glad hands here. So this is our trailer air supply here. We have our emergency side here. It supplies the air, it airs up the tanks. Then on the other side, we have the blue one for the service side. That's for when we step on our brake pedal. That you know, sends the signal back there to apply our service brakes on our trailer there. So check all those, make sure they're in good condition. We'll check the bolts and stuff on this side of the pinnel hook here on the trailer itself. Make sure they're all